So this week, we jump into another episode of Quick Guts, where we sit back and discuss shit. Again. Again. Out. Today, we will discuss the government's yearly UAP review, the sightings of of the cryptid known as the Glimmer Man, and... An update to the D.B. Cooper case. Yeah, you see, today we're going to talk about some articles. (laughs) We're going to discuss some shit. Smooth, easy jazz. (laughs) Welcome back to the 2 a.m. smooth, sexy jazz hour. Now sit back. Enjoy as we dive into another edition of Quick Cuts. Spiral bound edition. So I'm going squatching. We're going quick cut. <laughs> Loose leaf edition. Welcome back to Don't Touch My Sasquatch podcast. We've been off for two weeks. I'm Josh. I continue to be London. And we're both back, finally. Back and ready to party. (laughs) And a lot of new shit. Got a fucking dog out here just like... Is he? (laughs) That's about right. Hello! (laughs) I am here! Tapioca! (laughs) Tapioca! Classic shiznizzle. Well, let's start off talking about... Big screen London now. I don't have to do anything. (laughs) Big screen London! (laughs) Come at a theater near you. Tickets go on sale Thursday at noon. No, no, no. That's just your name. Big screen Lennon. All right. I'll take it. <laughs> I'm going to move Lennon. You get that? Oh, no. I'm going to put you back. I'll move you post. Haste. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw the camera. That's all. Oh, beautiful. None of your son. Hey, big screen Lennon back at you. BSL. <laughs> that sounds naughty. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to talk about... What are we talking about? A... Um, this um <clears throat> I like it. That's a that's a good topic. You stop doing with the ums. <laughs> I gotta swallow, but I've already swallowed thrice and you can't do a fourth time in thirty seconds. That's what she said. There we go. <laughs> Success. <laughs> uh, sorry. Why is car gurus ads popping up on my ads? I don't know, why don't you tell them? Not. Nah. It is quick cuts. We're not talking about it. <laughs> um This article comes from Metro.co.uk. It is about an Air Force officer. The title is Air Force Officer Goes Public with Terrifying UFO Encounter. It's coming right for us, he says. They're already here. What are we going to do? Well, a floating red square the size of a football field hovered over a U.S. military base not once but twice, according to a new report, causing terror and chaos. In 2003, the incident, the 2003 incident, was first made public during July's congressional hearing into the UAP, formerly known as UFOs. Giving sworn testimony, former U.S. Navy fighter pilot Lieutenant Ryan, Gra- Ryan Graves described this event secondhand, recounting the morning of October 14th in which a mysterious red square floated above Vandenberg Air Force Base in California. Now speaking on Lieutenant Graves' podcast, Merged, a second military surf source has revealed the object returned later in the day it was surfing <laughs> surfing usa <laughs> uh that fits in with the 2 a.m smooth sexy jazz time <laughs> come on ladies come give me a call oh naughty naughty i thought the camera wasn't recording but it is <laughs> jeff newt Chitelli. A senior patrolman at the time was not on location, but heard all hell break loose as screaming came over the radio. Ah! Pretty much. The screaming. It's coming right at us. It's coming right for us. I now it's the wrong scream. Now it's right here, he said. At first, he probably thought it was a joke because Air Force cops are well known for playing elaborate pranks. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you know the UFO they prank. You know how they go. However, it quickly, quickly became clear that it was no hoax. Oh, this is a real transmission? Oh, shit. Ah, shit. (laughs) Man, everyone. (laughs) (laughs) Here we go. It was hard to hear because they were screaming and they were scared, he said. This is all playing out on the radio and the dispatches are communicating with them, trying to get more information. It was just, it's just chaos, you know. The dispatchers are basically advising everybody to go on alert to get information. By the time Mr. Nunu Chitelli arrived at the base, the object had disappeared and things calmed down a bit. 
He said that the best, he said to the best of his recollection, he interviewed about six people about the incident alongside his Don't do your due diligence now. (laughs) Six people. Six of them. All fucking six. (laughs) There's a hundred people. Just need six. (laughs) Six. (laughs) Basically. So what did you see, uh, officer? Shit. I saw everything. Saw what he said before me. I saw it. Whatever it was he described. (laughs) Cheers, mate. Basically, what he described was that an object came in, was moving strangely, erratically. It got bigger and brighter as it came in, he said. Almost like it's coming closer. Pretty much. Then it came at a high rate of speed and flew right off up to entry control point, off to the entry control point, and stopped. And they all stared at it, and it just shot off. Although he did not witness the UAP himself, he said that he had no qualms in believing the testimony given to him at the time. These guys are trained observers. They're posted out there 24 7, he said. They know what aircraft looks like. They know what fishing boats look like. Okay. It's a bit different. All right. All right. There's a fishing boat in the sky. Why is there a fishing boat in the sky? Where'd Kevin go? I mean, and he, which one do you put this shit in my pants? He knows what a fishing boat looks like. <laughs> I, I didn't feel that they were jumping the gun because there had been a UFO. He also interviewed Boeing contractors with top secret clearances who had witnessed the first experience appearance at around 845 that morning and said they weren't playing a prank. And if they did, they're going to get an armed response from people with M4s, he said. <laughs> Mr. Nucitelli added that they described basically just a big square object, a flattened square the size of a football field, silently floating over the launch pad, glowing red. Can I ask a question? Yeah, go for it. Shoot. Sorry. Why is every single UFO basically compared to a football, football field? Um, because for us dim-witted Americans, uh, we all know what a football field looks like. <coughs> you can go fuck yourself. <laughs> dim-witted Americans. Fucking dim-witted. I mean, if you said it was about the size of a soccer tap, tap, pitch. Tap, tap over here. <laughs> I'm leaving an angry comment. <laughs> <laughs> fuck these guys. They pick on football. Wait. <laughs> shit. Um... It was how, okay, how long is a, is a soccer field? Is that 100 yards too? I really don't, I don't know. know. <laughs> wow. They vary. The guy that likes soccer. I think it's about that. I don't fucking know. It's because we don't measure it besides the goalie box. <laughs> how long is my favorite sports <laughs> no basic information? <laughs> I got this for you, people. Don't worry. I may be blind, but I got 100 hey, yards. It's the same as a football. Uh, me, okay, hold up. Anywhere from 100 to 130 yards long. Mm-hmm. How can it vary? I'm telling you, they vary. Very, very stadium to stadium. Well, I say, you're an idiot. Not you, son. In. You're cool. All right. I used to remember playing on different fields. That was like, these ones are awesome because it's tight close and then these ones feel like you're legitimately could run box to box and it would take you a year <laughs> it could it did and it was all of it but proceed to give these people your Nation. yeah okay and, long as a football field red light got it sweet asked by lieutenant graves if it could have been a military test he said i don't know it could have been a test Okay, but the military typically doesn't just test <laughs> doesn't test technology on an active base because the potential for disaster to make happen for disaster to happen is so high. Gotcha. Great, wonderful. Cool. Had there been cops on the scene, they might not they might have shot at it. You know, a lesser cop apparently. So for them to test something over an air force base, it would just be a disaster. The base north of LA is now leased by Elon Musk's SpaceX. Mr. Nucitelli added he had already provided testimony to the Pentagon's UFO desk, the Old Domain Anomaly Resolution Office Arrow. I and love those they, fucking acronyms. They sure fucking do. And they were genuinely interested in looking into it. He said he believes at least 80 people must have seen the red floating square that day. And he is now trying to track down more witnesses. More than just the six at the time, am I right? All right. I mean, six isn't enough. It's the Tesseract. Yes, a floating tesseract. Custom shit. Now let's uh, let's stick with the um, the uh, what's it called? What's it called? It's called, it's called the arrow stuff here. Okay. 
The DOD, the Department of Defense Office, this comes from coast to coast, and this is from October 19th of this year. Are you part of the DOD club? I'm not. Oh, I am. Dick of dogs. Nope. Dick drag, of donks. Drag our dicks club. Oh, I am part of that. <laughs> Flip it around, tied in the knot. Apparently tuck it. <laughs> the Department of Defense Office tasked with investigating UFOs has issued their annual report on the effort, and it indicates that while a considerable number of new cases have been collected, their analysis to date has found that the phenomenon is largely prosaic rather than alien in nature. Prosaic? Yeah. We're going to do a quick Google update here, folks. Do you, do you know what that is? I don't. I'm pretty sure. Isn't it like a... Is it uh, P-R-O-Z-A? Nope. P-R-O-S-A-I-C. Got it. Pros- Let me get the blind guy. <laughs> get the blind guy out here. Somebody get us a blind guy. Prosaic. Oh, help you lacking, with your stool movements. Lacking po- poetic beauty. Having a st- having the style or diction of prose. Make sure you talk away from the microphone. Lacking poetic beauty. It's, right. not, it's not beautiful. It's ugly. Yeah. Rather than the alien, rather than alien in nature, released by the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office at Row, the update states that. A total of 291 unidentified aerial phenomena, UAP, Ooh, reports were received nice. from August 2022 to <laughs> April 2023. All the noises. And they made <laughs> clicking noises. <laughs> so, we got a UAP knocking on the door. Having now analyzed a significant number of cases, the report observes that the majority, quote-unquote, the majority of unidentified objects reported to Arrow demonstrate ordinary characteristics of readily explainable sources. I'm just going to say real quick here, likely story. No, it's true. Of the reports that cannot be explained to date, they stressed that a large number of cases in Arrow's holdings remain technically unresolved because of a lack of data. Interestingly, the office goes on to posit that as data collection becomes more refined, the unidentified and anomalous nature of most UAPs will resolve to ordinary phenomena and in turn result in decreases in cases. To that end, the update notes that 100 of the reports came by way of the FAA via commercial pilots, and in those instances, most involved unidentified lights and that none of the incidents involved objects is a quote unquote exhibiting anomalous characteristics. So basically, they said most of this shit is just attributed to normal stuff. Gotcha. And people are just getting excited. <sighs> but oh. it's still the due diligence and it's still the job to have it be reported and investigated because that's how we figure out these things for real. That is true. They're not all real. No, no, not at Some all. Some are just, uh, for example, uh, <clears throat> driving to the old home. Oh, you can be all classy now. <laughs> oh, just wait till you actually join me in my apartment. You can I'm... be classy too. <laughs> <laughs> New studio, folks. Nothing weird. <laughs> <laughs> New studio, yes. Uh, anyways, old place. Going back, you know how there's the airport there? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> you all right? A... Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's emotional, I know. I'm excited. <laughs> yes, I do know of the airport. <laughs> So there were some strange lights just hovering, like four red lights in a line, mm-hmm. just hovering <clears throat> yeah, a little ways away from my apartment. Okay. I think it was a helicopter. But I could see how someone would say, that's a, it's a UFO. It's just sitting right there. It doesn't look like a helicopter. Right. But yeah, it was like four li- Maybe it wasn't a helicopter. But the airport's right there. So, so yeah. A helicopter. It's like... You well, just, you, but you, anybody you getting excited is like, oh... What is that? Right. That's all I'm trying to say. Yeah. It's still something. Going through these channels gets it to the point of the, or gets it to the desk in the minds of the people who can be like, no, that was this. No, that was a helicopter, stuff like that. And then that kind of just will help us weed out some of the stuff. So they're doing their job. Do I think some of it might be, uh, they're not telling us. Yes, exactly. You know, um, despite what may be, a dispiriting analysis to those who believe that UFOs are 
otherworldly visitors, there is something of a glimmer of hope in the update, as it concedes that, quote-unquote, a very small percentage of UAP reports display interesting signatures, such as high-speed travel and unknown <laughs> morphologies. Are we doing that? End. End. Okay. An unknown morphology. Otherwise, that'd be a bitch to find in the video. Yeah. The tantalizing handful of cases, the report says, are being looked at with, quote-unquote, objectivity, objectivity, and All of it. analytical rigor. And analytical rigor. <laughs> For some of them, probably. <laughs> which includes physical testing, as well as computer simulations, which they hope will provide some answer as to how or why the UAPs seem to be behaving unusually or appear to be unique in design. A practically... No. A particularly Jesus. interesting... <laughs> a particularly interesting detail found in the report is that despite expanding their scope to now include unidentified submerged objects, oh. as well as transmedium anomalies, the office only received a single USO case among the 291 incidents collected during the period covered in the update, and there were no events wherein something traveled between the air and the water. Uh -oh. Arrow was Arrow also indicated that they have found no instances wherein a witness suffered adverse quote unquote adverse health related effects from their experiences. While UFO enthusiasts may find themselves disappointed with the annual report its very existence serves as something of a victory for those who have long called for the government to investigate the phenomena and, in turn, tell the public what they discover. Yeah. So, like we just said, I mean, it's it's the due diligence mm -hmm. um, report, and then the correct people will be able to analyze and investigate. Now, we can only hope that the correct people are also honest people and our government is honest with it and allowing everyone to come out with stuff i'm feeling a little um trusting today i'm hoping that they can oh wow this is a different lennon yeah um it's gone it's gone they're lying to us <laughs> <laughs> no but i i think that just i think it's the coast to coast article here is correct mm -hmm. it's it's a step in the right direction mm -hmm. you know so mm -hmm. i i 291 were investigated between August 2022 and April 2023. I, I mean, that's a large number of... And I believe that all of them aren't real. They're just, you know, people with Joker syndrome. Yeah, yeah I don't know what that is. Go ahead. Well, you know, I'm like a dog chasing a car. If I ever caught one, I wouldn't know what to do. Oh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Got yeah, it. That Joker syndrome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But... Steps in the right direction are always... Did I use that analogy right? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. All I'm trying to say is they got too excited. That's all I'm trying to say. Like a dog oh, chasing okay. a car is excited. When yes. it got to it, you're like, what do I do? Yes. I, I don't think that analogy worked. I apologize. It's I tried right. to be all hey. philosophical. It's okay. It's I'll okay. take a wink now. Um, let's switch it up a little bit. We've uh, kind of covered the DOD <coughs> and Arrow and stuff like that. Let's talk about some cryptid type stuff. Is it... Glitter man. It's not the glitter man, but it is the glimmer man. I was about to say you were at a strip club, weren't you? <laughs> <laughs> Who's this fella? <laughs> I think I'm in the wrong place. <laughs> I'm going to leave, but wait a minute. What's going on here? <laughs> oh, there's another helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was just a bad dream. Uh, honey, why does my ass hurt? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Sorry. Terrible tan. I don't know why we made myself gay in this joke. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> I don't know what it is. Well, I don't like it. Hey, that's uh, almost the 100th anniversary. <laughs> what? I don't know what this is, but I don't like it. It's an anniversary nonetheless because we're doing another Quick Cuts. <laughs> Volume three or four. <laughs> that's right. That's from one. Did you want? Oh, speaking of anniversaries, my dude. Yeah. 18 months ago, 18 months ago, this day, uh -huh. you know what happened? Josh and Lennon, scared shitless. Yeah. No cameras at that time. Just microphones and us. Was it? Started a podcast. Was it really 18 months ago? This Did is episode uh, 76, and we've done two Patreon releases. Mm -hmm. So that'd be 78, so yeah. No shit. No, or is that three Patreon releases? Either way, it's been 18 months ago. I follow you. No shit. 
Mm-hmm. Oh God! Sorry, I just want, I meant to bring that up sometime. Enough today. to make a grown man cry. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. And for our year and a half anniversary, we're getting a new podcast studio in a week or two. There's a uh, some semantics that need to be handled on one person's part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fucking fuck that guy. Fuck that car. I mean, fuck uh, that deer. <laughs> but he's going to taste good. He's going to taste it good. I had oh, one. you had some? I, just, I got, so I picked it you up. You tenderized yes. him at 60 miles an hour. He's like, <laughs> that's going to taste good. <laughs> I picked it up yesterday. Um, and, uh, it's all frozen and I was like, all right, this one giant steak is sitting out and this is going to be my victory lap dinner <laughs> as it should be. It that good. thing cost it's you a couple thousand dollars to hit. It's good. It was very good. Uh, it's all good. Yeah. Once, uh, once the Sasquatch mobile part two <laughs> yeah. comes to fruition, we'll have a new studio. Yeah. I think I'll get a cyber okay. truck. <laughs> as I told you, this actually helps me out with moving. I don't have to clutter everything else yeah i can slowly build that in i mean and this has worked for you guys for 76 episodes now so not not quite 76 because you know well video wise they wouldn't know where the fuck we were otherwise that's true but one episode didn't didn't happen and we had to redo it i remember that the one and only episode we've ever redone hopefully that i wonder if we have that somewhere i'm sure we have it saved somewhere it's got to be on what the hard drive yeah yeah be crazy just Release it to Patreon. <laughs> the episode that never was. <laughs> Uncut, too. Yeah, that'd be wild. I mean, listen to it. Make sure we didn't say anything bad. But You know what I think I got thinking about when you brought it? That was up. a Philadelphia experience. Man. It was. Yeah, it was. 16. Yeah, that was uh, an hour See, afterwards. I remember it. <laughs> an hour and a half afterwards. Yep, we, I texted saying, said, I don't think this is going to work. <laughs> I was like, I didn't either. <laughs> Let's redo it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um. I was thinking we should do... Uh, Sorry to get on tangents, but that's kind of what Quick Cuts is. It is. I mean, yeah. It should be called Tangent Cut. Tangent Cut. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what were you saying? Um, we should re-listen to episode one for a Patreon or for that thing you were talking about the other day. The, yeah, we live stream it. Of course, with episode one, there's no video. So no. It, but it just would be looking it'd at be us. a video of us going, what the fuck? <laughs> 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 Listen how scared I was. <laughs> oh, God, I, I think we should do that. I went through my old notes one Maybe time. Maybe we should do that next Patreon. Yeah, we could do that. Or do we... Yeah. Let's see here real quick. Where's my... I, I kind of want to see what my old notes looked like. Or my suggestion was do it for YouTube Live. Yeah, I mean, we could do it for something. I I, make it work. doesn't matter. We'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> Maybe for the first one, let's see how it goes, and we'll do it on uh, Patreon. Oh, look at these notes. <laughs> Key points. History <laughs> slash origin. We were learning. We didn't know what the fuck we the were doing. The term Sasquatch comes from the word Sasquets. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's the Rockets of the Canada. Canadian Rockets or some shit like that, I said. Oh, my God. I put <laughs> colors in. <laughs> I still do colors, but that's just for my own purpose. Oh, my God. I had the outro at the end of my notes. <laughs> yeah. I have the intro in the, my notes, too. All right. Ready? Here's the outro. Yeah, please. Let, a little flashback. Hold on. <laughs> Sit back, ladies and gentlemen. Everyone, thank you so much for... No, I didn't even say that. That was just wow. awful. <laughs> Actually, none of those words were on there, except for thank you. It was, everyone, thank you for listening to our inaugural episode on our friend Sasquatch. Be sure to comment your thoughts and theories on the Patterson footage and Ape Canyon incident, spelled wrong, on our Instagram. P- posts on our Instagram posts, hashtag, nope, at don't. That's all I wrote. <laughs> Join us next Monday for another episode. Stay curious, be vigilant. Remember, don't touch my Sasquatch. Don't do it. We sucked. No, we didn't. <laughs> so joking. good. So good. I can't wait to. <laughs> definitely something coming up. We should re-listen. Here. I I think I've. Things we're not set up to live stream right now. I say we do the first one on episode one, and we just do. Seeing as there's no video anyway, so we yeah. just make it a, uh, a Patreon one where we don't have to live it. All right. Does sounds, that sound good. Sounds good to me. Maybe the next one. Next Patreon. Be easy. Yeah, sounds good to me. All right. Sold. Sold. Are we doing Patreon today? I mean, now we can. (laughs) We don't have to. (laughs) Let's see what we got. (laughs) Please proceed with the good... I don't think that episode's long either. (laughs) Glitter Man. It's like 45 minutes. Glitter Man. The Glimmer Man. 
Glimmerman. God damn it. That was actually an accident. That I thought it was. That's why I was trying to straight correct you, but at the same time, it's been seven times. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, if you think back to our episode, one of them, I believe it was the first one, Missing 411. Okay, got it. Which I think we've only done one Missing 411, haven't we? No, we did, three. Two, we did three. All no, right. we've done two. I'm sorry. We, did we didn't do one or three. We did two. <laughs> yeah. um, we both were wrong harken, to find the right answer. Yeah, harken it back to something you talked about. Taking us to the, ah, the Sasquatch entry. Adirondack Mountains. An Adirondack Mountains resident describes their encounter with a glimmer man while sitting in the backyard and watching their kids in the pool. The witness is shocked by the sighting. This comes from one of my favorite... Um, article or um sighting encounter submission websites phantomsandmonsters.com got it this is from wednesday november 8th of this year and here we go i wanted to share my account <laughs> regarding a predator like being it was sometime around 2006 or 7 and my kids and my friends were having a campfire in our backyard in our yard right outside our home we live outside of our town and have wooded areas all around us on the edge of the adirondack mountains in new york Oh. Off the deck of the of the house was a fire ring. Wait, the Adirondacks in New York? Uh, some of it. Most of it. Actually, all of it. Well, There's some in Vermont, I thought, too, right? I think the... Are we joking? Just go along with it. Oh, yes, there is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where the Adirondacks are. Don't look at the stickers on our... <laughs> don't look at the... <laughs> there you go. <laughs> It took you a little bit. But. Ignore it! <laughs> <laughs> Stop telling people where we are. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. The woods behind the pool go, go, go back. <laughs> the woods behind the pool go back quite a ways, and the pine trees are continuous to the woods. I had just bought... I had just brought out marshmallows for the fire Yummy. and sat in a chair with my back to the side of the property with the trees leading to the woods. To my right... It was light out, and I was sat listening to the chatter from the kids while gazing into the woods trying to relax. There was no wind or breeze, and it was very a very quiet night. I noticed a movement in the trees up to my right, up in the branches that were just behind the pool. I stared at the area because I saw something move, but nothing was there. As I started, <laughs> I started to see some kind of movement, but it was like the branches and pine needles moved instead of an animal or a being, which didn't make sense. <laughs> I fought so hard. <laughs> I fought so hard. I, I, have broke I lost I, the battle. <laughs> I wouldn't have broke if you didn't. If you didn't. Oh, I broke. <clears throat> <clears throat> Back to the reenactment. Yes. I watched for about a minute when the movement leaped, for lack of a better word, to the next tree that was closer to us. There was no noise, no swaying of branches like one would expect if there was a weight on the tree. <laughs> As I watched... <laughs> I watched. As I watched, I noticed that I was seeing pixels, like a digital picture, moving. I made out the shape of something that had arms and legs and a head, but not quite human like. The shape was hunched down on the branch, with one arm holding the tree trunk. The legs bent like it was squatting, and I felt, and it felt like we were being watched, even uh -huh. though I could see no face <laughs> or any other description. It was just pixelated movements in the shape of a being. It had moved closer to us and in, and was in the tree on our side of the pool now. When I realized how close it was, I told the kids it was time to go inside. They fussed a bit but insisted they go inside. Right then, my son saw me looking up in the trees and asked what I was looking at. And, of course, told him it was nothing. It did not take my <laughs> eyes. A stiff arm. Nothing. The fuck out of here! <laughs> Boom, 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 in the house. <laughs> I've seen this before. <laughs> Where's Arnie? <laughs> Haven't you fuckers ever seen Predator? <laughs> you one ugly son of a bitch. I gave up on it. <laughs> <laughs> You're one ugly son of a bitch. I gave up on it. <laughs> right then, my son. I did. <laughs> I'm not called son. Mama side, mama side, mama musa. <laughs> Of course, told me it was nothing. I did not take my eyes off the shape as soon as the kids got out and moved up and moved toward the deck to go inside. The shape moved from the branch. It was moving back to the tree where I first noticed it. The movement was so fast, so effortless, and so silent that oh. I got scared. 
Then it vanished into the woods, moving from tree limb to tree limb, and was gone in a matter of seconds. Nothing. I know of no creature that can move like that, and I know of nothing that fits that description. Almost like I, a monkey on a tree, right? Almost like a monkey. How'd <laughs> <laughs> you go old fashioned? Yeah, she? Like an old fashioned villain. Almost like a monkey. That was unexpected. <laughs> Has a very unexpected response. Almost like a monkey, Batman. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> but not quite. Uh, Great hairy asses, Batman. That's uh, a monkey. Shit. Almost like a monkey, Batman, but not. You see, it's actually a bird. <laughs> World's greatest detective, my ass. I've never seen anything like it. And we I've never seen it again. <laughs> Didn't say any of those words. <laughs> I've never seen it again, and we still live in the same house. We all have eerie feelings about the woods behind the house, and the feeling remains with us until this day. To this day. Anytime we walk through the wooded area, we have sections of the woods that we do not venture in for no apparent reason except for that uneasy feeling we get. You should venture into them. You know, they always say... Venture into the unknown. The best thing is when you get out of your comfort zone. Get the fuck out of your comfort zone, you baby. Get yeah. out there. You know yeah. what me and Lenny yeah, are on the he case. Said. We got it. We're close enough. We're on the case. We're going to come get you. We'll drive our nine-hour trip to get there. That's how nine? far away we well, live. Well, that depends. It's That's a, how far away we it live. It depends on if you're driving or if I'm driving. If I'm driving, it's probably about 11 and a half because I go the speed limit. Mm-hmm. If you're driving, outside of dodging the deer. <laughs> <laughs> Listen here. Are you saying I have a blood foot? I am saying you have a left foot. <laughs> yeah. We're not saying any of that because the insurance company is involved with us I'm right now. I'm kidding. I, well, it's a joke. If they're fi- First off, if they're listening, thank you for listening. <laughs> Thanks, friend. Like, second off, if you're listening, it's called a joke. It's called a joke, people. Lennon doesn't have a lead foot. It's actually like a dwarf star. <laughs> it's just dense and heavy. <laughs> So we you talked that about was it? Missing okay, 411 yeah, yeah. about a Glummerman encounter. Kind of, yeah, yeah. It was under the skies of Sasquatch cloaking itself, which yeah. I still believe they can do that, especially after that clip I showed you. Of the Sasquatch cloaking itself. Of being cloaked. It, it's The descriptions of those two accounts sound exactly like on Expedition Bigfoot. Mm-hmm. That little video they showed, like the little glimmer. Which was like really it cool. It yeah. was. And they caught it on camera. But my question I have about if a Sasquatch can cloak itself is, when it takes a shit, is it shit cloaked too? No. You just see random shit plopping <laughs> out. Plop. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Head <to> poop. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and a boat. Sorry, sorry. That's the eight part of me. My bad. There, you need a napkin. I got one. We found the Sasquatch shit den. <laughs> if a Sasquatch shits in the wood, does anybody know? Does anybody hear it? <laughs> <laughs> Lots of pine cones. <laughs> I it squeak. All those whistles you think that they're making is just them farting. <laughs> <laughs> Classic. <sighs> Can I get a oh, yeah? Oh, oh no no no! Yeah, I'm sick of the lack of enthusiasm I have. Can I get a? Can I get a? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. So stupid. <laughs> anyway, let's get back to the episode. I'm sorry. Oh, uh, you got a tish? <laughs> I don't have a tish. I have two nuts, though. Great. <laughs> Great. My legs are asleep. I'm sorry. Wicka, wicka. <laughs> this intermission is brought to you by... <laughs> what the fuck's happening? I'm just oh. getting another... Uh, I'm just finding another one here. My leg is asleep. I want to do it. Nothing gets the feeling back in the leg like jerking it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Almost there. (laughs) Close your eyes. Close your eyes. It might get in there. (laughs) I need to make eye contact with Sasquatch. (laughs) Like when he looks at me. <laughs> he is looking at the camera right now. 
<laughs> do it again. Do it again. <laughs> oh, I heard a Sasquatch whistle. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> well, I'm waiting for the article to load at You're this fine. point. Well, while that's loading, we're going to get an update in D.B. Cooper. Mm. We're going off script. Or off order. Off uh, kilter. We're what? going off kilter. <laughs> All right, we're going to get an update into D.B. Cooper here. New search for D.B. Cooper's parachute yields intriguing white sheet. This comes from <laughs> Coast to Coast. No laughing. White shit. No laughing. <laughs> hmm, there's a white sheet. Hey, Mandela effect real quick. Orion brought it up to me. Did you know that, notice that sh- dog shit used to get white when you were younger? Now it doesn't. Dog shit doesn't get white anymore. Maybe that's the food they were fed. And this brought to you by <laughs> debunking. <laughs> I'm just... No, you're not wrong. I mean... They yeah. changed the food formulas for most of the... They sure did. Over the years. Now we have to buy nothing but the most expensive for our precious little yes, baby. But yes, I do remember when it used to turn white. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't turn white. I mean, shit, there's a line in Step Brothers about it. You made me eat white dog shit. Oh. <laughs> so... Coast to coast, new search for D.B. Cooper's parachute yields intriguing white shit. I mean, sheet. Oh. A recent search <laughs> for famed skyjacker D.B. Cooper. If you don't know who he is, we did an episode on him. Yep. Go check him out. Douchebag Cooper. No. I'm oh, sorry. Darnabus Baines. <laughs> <laughs> so defeated. <laughs> For famed skyjacker, D.B. Cooper's parachute yielded a rather intriguing discovery in the form of a white sheet that may have been, may have played a role in the caper. (laughs) I just saw it rising from the camera. (laughs) The potential clue. My job today is just to fuck with you without trying to say anything. Mission accomplished! (laughs) Twice now. The potential clue to the decades-old cold case was found last Thursday by researcher Eric Ullis as he and his team were scouring a spot located near where a boy had stumbled upon some of the money from the legendary crime back in 1980. Oh, oh that's on the beach, right? Uh, yeah. Detailing the discovery in a press release, press release, he explained that the group had only searched 15% of the three-quarter miles long trench. That's false. Where they believed the parachute might be located when they found a tattered white flat sheet amidst dense blackberry bushes. Okay. Amazingly, the bedding had a Kmart tag on it, which allowed Ullis to determine they had been purchased from the store between 1964 and 1967, which is around seven to four years before the skyjacking. He went on to note that the flight attendant, Tina Mucklow, told the FBI that Cooper had tried to wrap the ill-gotten gash cash. <laughs> they used gash. Oh, no, that's not oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> Had tried to wrap the ill-gotten cash in some kind of white material prior to jumping oh, from the plane and it. vanishing into the annals of true crime history and mystery. We got 20 bills, 20 bills, 20 bills, 20 bills, 5 bills, 1 bill, 6 bills, 10. I don't know how many. I've lost count now, but now we got a ton of bills. <laughs> there she, he wrapped it. <laughs> a little D.B. Cooper freestyle rap coming to check out our SoundCloud. Uh, don't touch my Sasquatch. <laughs> I didn't remember how, many, how much uh, money he asked for, so I couldn't finish it right. So. It's all good. You know, nothing like a good freestyle. Yeah. Wickle, wickle, wickle. Nothing can be worse than Iggy Azalea's freestyling. I think that probably like matched. I'm not a rapper <laughs> at all. I'm not a rapper. <laughs> I can do poems. Boom, Just give me a little thing. Bing, pow. That's a good video. I'll show you that. Boom, later. bing, pow. Look at me now. Here we go. <laughs> Sorry. You're like grinding like you're sitting on something. No, I'm just feeling the beat. I'm feeling the beat here. Boom, bang, pow. Look at me now. I'm going to go fuck that cow. <laughs> yeah, it's your boy <laughs> sassy up in here. <laughs> Actually, let's get back to it. All we're right. Total off the calf. A little bit. Or cuff. <laughs> <laughs> calf. Is that what a Sasquatch baby's called? A calf? No. All right. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to ask. Uh, um, all right. A little scared after that one. Olis has also pointed out that other witnesses from the caper recalled seeing the skyjacker carrying around a sizable paper bag that could have contained the white sheet. Could have. Maybe. Who the fuck knows? I don't know. Given the flight attendant account of seeing Cooper use a white material to wrap around, wrap the $200,000 ransom in, 
The mystery of the paper bag in the age of the white flat sheet. That's a that that'd be a cool book. <laughs> the <laughs> age of the flat white sheet in the mystery of the paper bag. Beautiful. And the location of its discovery, the possibilities cannot be ignored. All this concluded. They are endless. He went on to amuse <laughs> <use> that. <laughs> <laughs> He went on to muse that, quote, this item is at least 56 years old and was transported to the difficult to reach spot within a half mile of the 1980 money find. Somehow, for some reason, by someone, the researcher now plans to have on having the sheet tested to see if it contains some distinct fibers that were found on the necktie hmm. that Cooper left behind on the plane. When was this found? <laughs> this uh well the article is from november 1st of this year so it was found november 1st of this year no it was recently it was recent it was recent but we don't have a time so they think that it was sitting there for that long and didn't i don't know stolen decay yeah anything well last anything time. over the last 40 years but here's the thing when i was in the woods and i found a random <clears throat> sheet on the ground i did my best not to steal it because I, you know, that's a hot commodity. Everyone wants to steal a flat white sheet off the ground. <laughs> right, absolutely. <laughs> um, no, but I hear what you're saying. I mean, I don't know if they found it in the ground. They said it was. Um, they said it was in a, a blackberry bush, I think. Um, like amidst that. dense blackberry bushes, yeah. But I mean, it dates to the right time, and it is just grasping for straws. Right. I mean, uh, it was there. <laughs> Listen, all right. Grandma was just out having a picnic with her old favorite sheet. And lost and it in the it. wind. Yeah, and it just got it right next to her. Yeah, fat stacks of cash. <laughs> well, that was longer. That was like in the eighties. It was longer yet. It was so longer that, yet. There's no correlation between the money and the. Okay, we're dissecting. Who got the money? Much. Who got the money? I don't know who stole the cookie from the cookie jar. It's a long article. Finally loaded. <laughs> That's a long article. Mm. Got time for one more short one? Yeah. Yeah, longer as possible. Dog man encounter at Clat Stop, Colorado. <laughs> That's pretty good. I like that. You should do the whole article like that. I don't even know <coughs> what that voice is. Longer as possible. Dog man encounter in Clat Stop County, Oregon. <laughs> it's like a lawyer and his friend were clearing trees for the private landowner in Northwest Oregon. Later in the news, they decided to camp in the woods for that night. There was a dis- that was a decision that they both regretted. <laughs> okay, that's what it is. So, um, Goofy has like Mickey Mouse. Goofy has a uh, it's a, a tutorial of, like cartoon. If you ever seen what I'm talking about, uh, are we talking about Goofy? <laughs> I'm so good, <laughs> fucking. <laughs> All right, <laughs> so the cartoon was <laughs> random. <laughs> no, no, listen, listen. Goofy has a cartoon. You know, Mickey Mouse and his friends. Yes, older cartoon. <laughs> okay. They were like um, demonstrations on how to go to work and all that, but he would always fuck it up, and it's that exact same voice. Is it? Yeah. Now I'm going to find it. You just keep going. Don't mind the tip of the tap over here. All right. So uh, this article is uh, yeah. Logger's Possible Dogman Encounter in Clatsop County, Oregon. I'm a logger living in Northwest Oregon. You look like it. I've lived here an entire life, my entire life. These woods are my home. You see? My father and grandfather were loggers, and I took over the family business after they retired. See, I don't even know if I remember the voice now. A private landowner liked how we conducted business, and we provided him light arborist work as well. Recently, he had some old trees that he wanted us to take down. Is this long? This is kind of not long. Mr. Keith, look at Mr. Walker wouldn't hurt a fly. Nor a step on a hand. I fucking love old timey cartoons. <laughs> you know what that is? There we go. So um, that, so that I, I don't want to get like copyright stricken. So I no, you're good. Sure I just had so, a couple slots. No, you're good. Um, <clears throat> that voice, if you notice, like all the old black and white movies and stuff from like the fifties, they were always like, "Listen here, doll." <laughs> like, <laughs> they, uh, there's a transatlantic accent, is what it's called. 
Oh. It was a mix of uh, British and American. Okay. And it's funny, like, the old bloopers and stuff, they'd be like, like, they would snap out of it. Like, they thought that's how you were supposed to do the movies back in the day. I'm pretty positive if I'm remembering this right. Ah, oh, yeah, see? There's a 20... Th- God damn it, you fucked up again, Jim. And at the end, they would literally snap right out of it. They'd be like, listen here, da- uh, f- I fucked that one up. Bill, can we do another take? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It, it was I'll pretty have to good. Find, not now, but yeah. I'll have to find video. The transatlantic there. accent. So... A private landowner liked how we conducted business, and we provided him light arborist work as well. Recently, he had some old trees, and he wanted us to, that he wanted us to take down. It was an easy job. My buddy and I set out to work and ended up cutting well into the night. So we decided to just make camp for the night and pick up first thing in the morning. That way, it would be out of our hair, and we could keep it moving. I pitched a tent for us. I'm sure he did. While my friend made his, made the fire, we spent a few hours telling jokes and drinking until we decided to get some shut eye. The tent ended up being a bit warm, so I decided to... <laughs> I wonder why. Old broke back over there. Jesus. You always Woo. go gay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Is that not allowed? I, uh, don't put us into this position. Put me in this position. Was, us. I'm not insulting the gay <laughs> He's community. Like, I, I'm the tent ended <laughs> up being a bit warm, so I decided to sleep out under the stars. Oh, Brokeback Mountain. <laughs> it was a beautiful summer night, and the stars were always more visible out here in the woods. So eventually, the sound of the wind and the swaying of the trees lulled me to sleep. I woke up a few hours later. It was pitch dark. The stars weren't out anymore. <laughs> I'm still pitching a tent. <laughs> the wind was blowing. The wind was no longer blowing in the trees. Everything was very still. It felt like it happened in an instant. Like I blinked, and the stillness set in all at once. Mm. In the distance, I heard a strange noise. A loud Blood curdling roar echoed through the forest. That scared the shit out of me. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> like Snow White. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> Charge! Woo! Woo! Echoed through the forest. All my hair stood up. On end, as I reached for my flashlight, 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 <laughs> when I clicked on it, it was super bright. I beamed directly into the deep woods, and a roar happened again. Yeah, you this- blinded them. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see. <laughs> and that's when the breeze picked up. I crawled over to the tent to kick it so my friend would wake up. I heard the rustling inside as he slowly unzipped his pants to the tent, and then he <laughs> And he's white mm-hmm. as a sheet. <clears throat> Almost like a 1964 Kmart sheet. Oh. I, I know just from his face that he had s- also heard the roar. We both know what bears <laughs> sound like. We know what how to handle them. We were scared, but also curious. <laughs> and also, Why only, curious? Only a very large <laughs> creature could make a noise like this. No. <laughs> I reckoned it was much bigger than a bear. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, you know. Then, in the next moment, a tree fell about 100 yards or so from camp. Time it was get a, the fuck out of it there. It was a big old tree. It slammed into another tree, and that one fell too. My friends looked at me. My friend looked at me, dead in the eyes, and slowly he raised his flashlight in the direction of the fallen tree. He turned on it. There it was. The creature was huge, much bigger than a bear. It was on all fours like a bear, and it had similar g- giant head. But this creature was very sp- had very sparse dark fur and lots of light colored bear skin. I could see its muscles hmm. shifting. And whatever it was, it fell two trees like they were nothing. Two trees. Two tree times. Two of them. The creature roared once again, and it turned in our I direction. I want to join! <laughs> it stared into our glare of our flashlight, and to our shock, started running at us. We glanced at each other and quickly climbed a nearby tree. Luckily, well, I don't know why you'd climb a tree. You know they can not topple them bitches by this point. Uh, the, sec- Look, the second question I have is, how fast of a climber are they? Yeah. That wasn't yeah. that far I mean, away from that. Just like a fucking cartoon. <laughs> 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 like, that was that was been quick. Yeah. Pretty impressed. It's Hey, s- they're good with their wood. Oh, he made a good one. <laughs> we glanced at each other and quickly climbed a nearby tree. Luckily, we got out there before the creature noticed where we went. We heard it tearing through the tent and the campsite for what seemed like hours. There we stayed until the sun rose and brightened the dark woods. We had no idea where the creature had gone. When we looked down at our tent and at our campsite, it was torn to shreds. It looked like a whole pack of bears descended on it, rather than just one large animal, or one large one. 
One large one. We slowly moved. It it might be. We slowly (laughs) moved down the tree, watching the area as we descended. We gathered whatever stuff we could salvage, then walked as quickly and quietly back to our truck as we could. I drove directly home. I don't know what it was, but it could have killed us and anyone else that got in its way. I have not talked to Steve since that day. (laughs) No. Looking back at the encounter, and after talking to my friend, oh shit, <laughs> we believe that it may have been what some people refer to as a dogman. A human-like, oh. the human-like way it appeared was not only shocking but totally confusing. I just don't have any other explanation as what to the what that creature was. I do, a what? rabid grizzly bear. You're not wrong. It could have been. It could have been a big rabid bitch. Mm-hmm. Um, a note from the website. Um, Because they will sometimes (laughs) reach out to these people. Yes. Um, After contacting the witness, he did tell me that the encounter occurred in Clatstop County in June of 2023. I asked if he could provide more details on the description of the beast. He was reluctant to do so. I honestly believe that he was still in shock over the encounter. Probably did not pick up on more specific characteristics since it occurred so quickly. Because of this of his business and the possible ridicule that he would receive if he were associated with the incident. He didn't offer any further information. That's from the editor of the website. <coughs> so, Sorry. Another so, one from Phantoms and Monsters. So that one, um, for the sake of thinking logically real quick. Okay. Um, in shock. Saw it quickly. Mm. Was scared. Um, maybe it was a dead tree and there was a bear trying to claw at it. Mm-hmm. Like I said, a rabid bear or something because it was mangy looking. Yeah. Uh, especially if they're they're hungry, they're psychotic. Yeah, and they're known to be able to fall two trees. Yeah. <laughs> was that a joke? It was. The bears can't knock down trees like oh, that. Oh, well, that's why I said it was a dead tree, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you still, wrong. I'm just trying to say... Again, yes. Gotta have that. Because it was on all fours. It never got back up. I don't know what dog man looks like. I don't either. Off the top of my head. Um, but the patchy next question would have been like you're saying too, patchy dark hair. If it yeah, was like yep. mangy or something. Yeah. Um, that's the first thought, logical answer. Also, uh, have you seen elderly grizzly bears that are like old? They're like weird they're patchy. They look, well, that, they but, look fucking <clears throat> like old elderly ones. Like they're patchy and their, their hair's all like weird. Yeah. Um, also how slow is the fucking thing? You saw it in the flashlight, and then you were able to climb a tree mm-hmm. without it noticing you climb a tree. Is it blind? Right. Is it blind? It could be. Or did you take the flashlight and go, ha, catch it? It's definitely an elderly one. <laughs> Didn't have its spectacles on. It had a fucking cane. <laughs> so I put this tree down. I mean, it a cane. <laughs> oh, I know you guys are in there somewhere. I just want a hug. <laughs> Give me a bear a hug. <laughs> it's the bear necessities. Copy. So yeah, so that's some uh, that's some awesome articles from the internet for you folks. That was a beautiful job, Lennon. Thank was, you very much. It was a bit of laughter. It was a bit of there was some tears shed. There was some there was a tangent or two. Some urine spilled. <laughs> some shit in pants. Sometimes some shit in pants. That's that's happened on occasion. But you know what? We're gonna continue stalling until Lennon remembers to open the outro. Oh well, on that bombshell, Lennon. Could you pretty 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 please? Yes, I can. Throw these motherfuckers to the outro. Ladies and gentlemen, and Sasquatches, once again, thank you all so much for listening to the Don't Touch My Sasquatch podcast. If you like what you're hearing and would like to support us, check out our Patreon where we have a backlog of bonus content for you to enjoy, as well as multiple other perks for you to enjoy as well. Head it over to our website for our dope merch selection and combo it with the Patreon and get a discount on your purchase. You can reach us on Facebook and Instagram as well as through our email, dtscast at gmail.com. Check out our YouTube. See the glorious work Josh puts out there with the video edition each episode of each episode. Yes, sir. We're back on track. Sorry about the last couple weeks. Hey, we have lives too. You guys understand. I know you do. And be sure to like the video and subscribe while you're there. Links are in the show notes below. And right now, do it while you're listening. Do it. Drop us a nice five-star rating. This helps us to grow and you to receive more awesome content. For Josh, yeah, great job acting out all of the encounters today. I tried. I tried. I gave it my fucking best shot. <laughs> Great. For so, Lennon. For me, get a new set of wheels. <laughs> it's time. But for now, remember to stay curious, be vigilant, and don't touch my Sasquatch. Don't do it. He's invisible jumping all nimbly bimbly from tree to tree.
like a cat. <laughs> I can, baka. We're getting good. You're 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 figuring out the rhythm. I better change it. Hey, I also have a mini fridge we can just stock up with energy drinks. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking up. You buy a case of yours, I'll buy a case of mine, and we'll be good. I fucking love this guy, I tell you what. Uh, I also have a freezer, so we can freeze some shit, too. Ah, <laughs> who wants to freeze some shit? <laughs> you know what? I'm going to have uh, Uncrustables peanut butter and jelly in there. There we go. Okay. Oh, I don't care for that. <laughs> Where the fuck that come from? Don't worry about it. <laughs> came from my sandwich fridge. <laughs> All right. This episode, I'm going to be on the, on the massage chair. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Sorry, guys. Here I go. <laughs> Too late. Full encompassing. Yeah. I can't move my forearms. I am being massaged right now. Oh, Just God. bring the computer to me. Just bring the computer to me. <laughs> <laughs> Look in the touchpad. All right. How did you get so good at that? Well, you see. <laughs> trying to clear my bowels. Nostril. I probably should have done the. I should have probably found and done the navage. I oh, found it. I thought you were gonna ask for tissue. I got tissue. You want tissue? I can try, but it's kind of dry. It's in my fucking sinus. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you literally got a tish. I told you. Do you want a tish? <laughs> he said, "I'll take a tish. I'll give it a shot. We'll do a tish." <laughs> Now we have box. <laughs> Minecraft. Blocks, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta ask, because I didn't hear from you. When I sent the outro, mm -hmm. I had a little special ending for you. Didn't get a chance to watch it. Mm. I apologize. Blow, before we start, blow it up right now. All of our cameras are going. If you, uh... Um... <laughs> um, I got this. I got this. Let's just be on your side, then. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Nothing. Yeah, it's gone. Okay. Good. Right back to it. But video bonus time. Oh, I don't know what to do here. <laughs> I don't know what to do here. <laughs> I think you're gonna have to take care of it. You fold and tuck it, so it stays nice and tucked in. Hey, what? The drawstring and tie it in a bow to keep it all cinched up nice. It feels <laughs> unnatural to me the other way. <laughs> Feels unnatural to me, but it'll work. <laughs> what the fuck? You're missing the visual right now. Get out of here, bitch. <laughs> bitch. That was after the fade out. I was like, oh, that'd be perfect. Get out of here, bitch. <laughs> bitch. <laughs> I'll actually let you watch it visually after we've done recording, but I appreciate and apologize. We have the most random clippable shit. God. Old fucking blind ass over here can't see shit. Old blind guy. I wish he had his glasses right next to him. <laughs> this feels unnatural to me. But I'll look. Or whatever I said. <laughs> Give it a shot. <laughs> Give it a shot. <laughs> I think I will. I think I will. <laughs> Get out of here, bitch. Bitch. <laughs> All right. Quicken it. Cut it. Volume. Taste. No. <laughs> that old bastard has to work like always. Yeah, and that stays in, huh? It's good. It's good. Good. I don't. What? Get it? On it? What? On it? Yeah. It works for both of us. We're that good. Uh. Oh. Uh, Can I get a snarf? Snarf. Oh, I thought you were pushing the button. I got God damn him. it! I got him. You did. Oop. Why am I doing this? It's not recording. Good soup. Eighteen months of go fuck yourself. No, really. Literally. <laughs> you're going to want to stop that shit. <laughs> so you got to open it in your lap. That way you can spill and make it look like you pissed. Luckily, that didn't happen. No, that's actual piss. A little PSA to all you men out there. Um, life gets hard. Prioritize. Compartmentalize. And bury that shit deep. That's actually false. That's how you become miserable and unhappy. Um, remember, everybody's counting on you. Kanto, Kanto, Kanto!